So I actually have one more story and then I'll give it yeah. to you. Um, on one of my very first, uh, like the third or fourth retreat, I had two spiritual people in the community. Uh, one was 78 and one was 81. And they were best friends for 35 years. And they both came on my retreat and they did, of course, with confidentiality, I couldn't tell, tell them that they were both going to be there. And they walk in and they're so mad at each other. What are you doing on this retreat? Well, what are you doing on this retreat? Well, why didn't you tell me you had an abortion? Well, you never told me. And I tell you what, that was the most spirit-filled <laughs> retreat I have ever had. And that's the secret. They had been holding these abortions a secret for over 55 years. So our youngest has been probably 18 and our oldest 83. So it doesn't matter what age, people need healing. Yeah, and then um, stay up here too. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk about some of the tools um, that are available and uh, then we'll still take more questions. But I actually got a call when I was answering the Rachel Spinyard helpline from um, a 94-year-old who wanted to go through a retreat. And she wasn't driving anymore, so we arranged for transportation for her to go. And then she wrote this amazing letter about that she'd finally found freedom after over 70 years um, by going to, through this retreat. And so it doesn't matter how old you are. It also doesn't matter whether, you know, whether it was the person um, that had the abortion, it could be a, a grandparent, it could be an aunt, it could be, as Mary Lee said, you know, abortion affects the whole family. So it could be that you're grieving the loss of somebody in your family that has had an abortion. And so, you know, God does place people in our lives um, that have experienced abortion. So after this talk, if you find any of your family members or friends or anybody that needs our, our brochures, please, as Mary Lee said, they come from all over Texas and all over the country and the world. Um, please feel free to take our brochures, refer them to our website, newheartoftexas.org. We also um, have um, Grief to Grace brochures available, again, for anyone who's experienced abuse. And, um, and they can also go to our website to sign up for both those retreats. One of the things that's crucial during our retreats, whether it's Grief to Grace or Rachel's Vineyard, is prayer. And on our website, we have a prayer vigil. And um, during Grief to Grace, we have people pray throughout the retreat, which is five days. Um, we have them sign up in one hour blocks. And, um, and so feel free to visit our website. Our Grief to Grace retreat is the next one coming up, and it's July 1st through 5th. And so you can actually look on our website and sign up on the prayer visual. We also have Rachel's Vineyard retreats coming up um, in August, September, and October. And so uh, we always look for prayers. So how you can help us, definitely you can pray. If the Lord puts it on your heart that you want to make a donation so that you can sponsor someone going through Rachel's Vineyard or Grief to Grace, you can certainly do that online as well. Um, and there's information on our donation um, button on how to, how to do that. Um, again, our Rachel's Re Vineyard, Vineyard retreats are free, but they do cost us $300 per um, participant. And of course, we pay that out of our budget. Our Grief to Grace retreat fees are normally $1,500, but because we have such a generous donor community, we've reduced the price to $600. Um, and so that's um, $600 for five days of just amazing healing. We cannot offer that one for free because we have so many expenses associated with it and we've had to you know, do so much training, have therapists on the retreat, that kind of thing. But we still have a really reduced cost. Other tools that are available, um, on the table there are letters that um, that I um, brought from my role at the Justice Foundation. One of the things that organization is doing now is a center against forced abortion. They may come and speak to y'all sometime, but basically it's illegal in Texas to force a girl or woman to have an abortion. But a lot of people don't know that. And so um, parents force their children and um, spouses, you know, husbands force their wives. Um, and so there are, um, on our website, the Justice Foundation, Dot org. There are um, letters that you can download. There's a Dear Parent letter explaining to the parents that you can't force your child to have an abortion um, and what the laws are and what the resources are available for her and for them. Um, there's also a medical professional's letter explaining to school counselors, nurses, etc. about the laws and how to counsel that girl. And then there is um, uh, a letter which we are starting to do training for police departments and CPS workers 
on the laws around that so that if they get a call saying my mom is forcing me into an abortion clinic they can respond and understand that it's again it's not lawful for the parent to do that so we're really trying to start off this this movement in texas and again we'll you know um, someone will probably share that with you at some other meeting but those resources are available um, on the justicefoundation.org so you know we're opening it up for questions mary lee and i will be up here roses here if you have any questions about anything we've talked about um your time I actually have one more challenge for you is that every time I speak to a group I'd like to challenge you that now that you have heard this information God's going to ask you to share it so I really ask you to take some of my business cards some of the brochures keep them in your car and be watching because someone's going to need our help and someone's going to share something with you and you pull out my business card and say, oh, here, I have the perfect. You don't even have to say, just take a look at this. And, and he is going to bring someone who you can share this with. I was just thinking in your badge you hand out because we, down at the big Planned Parenthood, I give my brochures to the big bus, the big blue bus, and they hand out our brochures there too. Oh, no, I think you want to have them. Yeah, so Next take as many as you want Absolutely. and put them in there. Yeah. Okay, question. Uh, yes, is there uh, a way that your organization can equip people like me to go out into my community and teach this to to someone? Uh, yes. To encourage them to come in to go to this? By actually, by going through the retreat, mm -hmm. you can get all the experience you need. And that's what I, I advise people to go. If you want to learn more, go through the retreat. Because then, once you experience it, whether you've had an abortion or not, you can go and tell everybody. We had a, one of our new board members who doesn't know anyone who's had an abortion, and um, she's our uh, treasure. So I, she has not had an abortion. Yet. Right, and I said you need to go through it. She put it off, was scared. I don't want to. I'll take somebody else's place. And what am I going to say? What am I going to do? She went through it. Oh my gosh, totally life changing. And now she and she actually lives in Tyler, and now she goes to the churches and talks about it. She hands out the brochures all the time because once you experience it, then you have the power and the knowledge. And there's nothing like experiencing it to be able to talk about it to other folks. And again, you know, we have pregnancy center directors who have not had abortions who want to find out what it's all about before they refer somebody to it. They go through it and their lives are changed, not only from hearing the stories of others, but for what God reveals to them in, you know, in their own life. Maybe some, some sin or some secret or something that they had, had never dealt with. So, yes, it's definitely life-changing. Yes. Uh, your next retreat, you said, was in August? In August. Now, where are they held? In I actually, Round Top? In said? Round Top. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, how, how long are How many days? It starts, <laughs> we have them Friday through Sunday. Starts at 5 o'clock on Friday and ends Sunday at 3. Some of our retreats start on Thursday at 5 and end Saturday at 3. Because we have pastors who want to be home on Sunday and counselors who want to be home on fr or be at work on Friday. So we kind of do both. We do six to eight retreats a year. And when we have more teams, we do more. But we're always looking for pastors and counselors. Because like Tracy said, it's life-changing for them. I mean, pastors come through it, and they have to go through it too before they can be on a team. But it changes the way they preach, the way they counsel, because they hear what's happened to the women and men who've experienced the pain of abortion. It's life-changing. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you. Please make sure you take some of our brochures. Yeah, and if you want to speak to any of us after, we're around for a few minutes, yeah. so thank you. And um, let me just, I just felt led just because, you know, both Rosa and Mary Lee um, spoke to the fact that when they went to have their abortion, if they had just known, you know, that there was alternatives, and that they wouldn't have done it. Right. And so I just want to stress again, you know, that I think that when we go out to pray at Planned Parenthood, that is really the cornerstone, you know, of what we're doing. And and it's to demonstrate the love of God. And and if you're going to go ahead and minister to the homeless, you got to go where the homeless are. You know. And so that's why we're there. So I just encourage you, 
You know, I don't know if we, I personally, I'm not out there near as much as Joe and Joyce, who are so faithful to always be out there every Saturday morning. But I personally have never had one of those young people come across to talk to us and said, well, I already know about PAC and I already know about birthright, but I'm choosing to go to Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. No, they're always like shocked that they have other alternatives. Mm -hmm. So we've got to go to show them the love of God, breathe hope into so oftentimes a hopeless situation and give them the real facts and information to direct them to the crisis brain sense, which is what this is. Absolutely. So, so please, you know, consider, you know, if you've never gone, you know, ask the Lord, and I bet he's going to say, you know, go. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so pick a day and go. Take a bag with you. And then, you know, take the bag, take a bag even to your pastor. But we'd love to get to the point where we have enough churches and Christians involved with us that we have someone outside that Planned Parenthood every minute they have their doors open. That's where we want to get to. We've got a long way to go toward that. So anyway, those bags are back there. And thank you very much.